how should government ensure that change is introduced in a way that serves the interests of the public? Yes, that's, um, that's a very important question. Uh, in my opinion, our number one priority as, uh, as a government is to educate two very specific uh, groups of people. The first is the legislators, us in Parliament. We need to be in a place to understand what are the challenges of AI for the future, because we have to vote on a framework that will make sense on a framework that will allow, on one hand, to have a pro-investment, investment-friendly policy in order for innovation and, and businesses to thrive, and on the other hand, to protect our citizens. So if the 300 members of parliament and the ministers uh, in our government don't understand uh, what it, it takes to involve AI in our government work, then we're doomed. So uh, the, the number one uh, priority is to educate uh, the legislators in order to have informed decisions on what is coming. I made a proposal to the Minister of Education on including AI as a course in schools. Because in 10 years, you're, you're asking what will happen in 10 years. So in 10 years, what will happen for sure is that the people, the, the children that are now, uh, let's say, 12 years old, they enter into the gymnasium, this is how we call it in Greece, they will probably graduate from a university. They will be in a place to, uh, to go for their first interview, uh, for their first job. And for sure, this, the same as it happened for our generation, if, if we didn't know how to use Word and Excel, we couldn't get a job. Uh, for them, uh, what we know for sure is that if they don't know how to use a front-end AI application, they will not get a job. So we have to build human capital in Greece. We don't have the billions that you know, other countries have to invest heavily in AI, but what we, we can invest in human capital. So children in Greek schools uh, need to be taught early on, today, I think we are, we are already late, what it means to, to work with AI applications, and teachers as well need to play this game. We're, we're all very afraid about what will happen you know, with students that have to do their, uh, their exercise and uh, you know, write their their essay and so on, if it will be AI generated and so on. No, this, this is not what we should be afraid of. We should teach children to use AI applications in order to be smarter. We're here at the Economist Convention. We have to imagine, you know, Economist is a wonderful addition that today can be wholly generated by AI. You have a, a very talented illustrator at the Economist, a Polish guy, I'm a big fan of his, who is doing really fantastic things for for your covers. These illustrations can be today generated by AI for free. And with a very small, for a very small amount of money, you can create even better and faster illustrations like this. All your texts can be generated by AI. All your data and your tables can be generated by AI. And I'm pretty sure that some of the texts that we read at The Economist, and we do read them, they're made by AI tools. And that, that's okay. But what you need to know is that the, the consumer, the reader, will also have the power to understand if this is AI generated and if this is really some information of additional value for them. If it's really a human speaking to a human, if it's really an editor who has put the, the effort, the human effort, to do something better than the machine can do today. So if you at The Economist can give this answer, then governments can do the same and businesses can do the same.